Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the review of what happened in France and the Netherlands. No, I'm not wearing a Ligue 1 jersey or an Ajax jersey. I was thinking about an Ajax jersey, but then I said, okay, uh, with uh, former last captain Traunab actually club. I don't feel quite that confident, although it was a pretty big win for Ajax overall. Because that was a game they probably shouldn't have won in many ways. No, I'm wearing Ka, uh, my friend Idris's favorite team, who won the derby against Le Havre. Uh, yeah, <laughs> the war has not been kind to either cities, but having been in both of them, Ka is the, definitely the nicest city of the two. So yeah, there you go for Idris. I'm very calm. Uh, but yeah, we have a few things to talk about. I mean, in France, I think the major headline is again uh, an atrocious performance by PSG. Um, but I actually, what I, I watched was the Marseille Nice Derby, the South, uh, of Southwest, uh, of Southeastern France Derby, um, which had huge implications, I think, for who will go into second place. Also, Rennes suddenly moving into that conversation as well. Uh, Rennes may be uh, the informed team at the moment in uh, League A. Uh, of course, on the bottom, uh, we're about to lose another giant with Bordeaux. Uh, things are not looking pretty. And as I said already, in the Netherlands, Ajax seemed to lose grip on the league with Feyenoord really running riot over them. But they turned around in the second half, uh, especially late in the second half, and get an imp a rather impressive win in what I would say was the best atmosphere of any of the big games this past weekend. The uh, Amsterdam, the Johan Cruyff Arena, that was just electric. And you saw the hatred, the rivalry, everything was in there. More so than the Rome Derby and definitely more than El Clasico, which is still very much a hey, 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 opera uh, <laughs> uh, audience. So yeah, uh, let's uh, jump. I want to start in France, as I said, for to win for Caen and Le Havre. But in Ligue 1, uh, we had Lille getting a pretty big win at Nantes, which might actually move them into the Champions League. Definitely European com com conversation. And Nantes, uh, who a few weeks ago maybe should have, could have, were, um, lurk, you know, look, look at these spots. A little bit far falling out. Uh, same thing goes also a little bit for Strasbourg, who only a nil nil at Lorient, who desperately need the points to stay in there. And I remember not too long ago, I said Lorient is probably likely to go down. Mm, not so sure and, 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 and anymore, if, especially since Troyes and uh, Clermont are uh, dangerously getting close. Uh, Clermont losing 3 1 uh, to Lens and Troyes 1 1 against Saint Etienne. Saint Etienne, another big team. So we, there's a potential of two really big teams in France, it's similar to what happened in Germany last uh, year, going uh, down. Um, Monaco against PSG. I mean, the way PSG is not showing up at this moment. Yes, you have a humongous lead. Uh, it is still 12 points. Humongous lead, you will win the league. Although, if you keep on losing this way, you actually might hand remember <laughs> say the title, but I I, I just don't, don't see it. Uh, they will get the necessary points uh, in the games at home. So I under understand it. Messi was not playing, but uh, you cannot show up like this. Marseille is a uh, Marseille. PSG is a dumpster fire at the moment. Uh, it's such a toxic club ever since they got eliminated from the Champions League. And it was always gonna, gonna be his way. It was Champions League or bust, and now it is going bust and I don't know where it will go. I literally don't know where it will go, but it is not pretty uh, at this very, very, very moment. As I said, also not pretty are the scenes in Bordeaux where Montpellier, despite having two tour two records, win 2 0. Bordeaux seem down and out. And doesn't look pretty there as well. Um, what else uh, do, do I want to point out? Uh, Reims and Lyon. Lyon again. Lyon is such a mixed bag. You have Europa League uh, Lyon, yay, and you have Ligue Lyon, nay. Uh, if they don't win the Europa League, I think there's a good chance that Lyon will not make it into Europe next season, which is staggering. Marseille against Nice, uh, I think was an open and entertaining game, but uh, Marseille overall the, were clearly the better um, um, team. Should have scored maybe early, they get a penalty, which was, which was pretty clear that Milik uh, converts. Then, as I said, second half, a little, a little bit more than just when you thought that uh, Nice may go, go for it. There were a couple of good, good chances for Marseille, and then uh, Bakembo just came on, makes it 2-0, and very late on, uh, Lemin 
pulls one back after Kleibert assist. So at the moment it's Marseille in second place, but it's not solidified. At least it's solidified over Nice, but not uh, Ren is still in there. Ren, of course, getting a 6-1 win over Met, as I said, informed team. And at the moment, actually the team that is most likely to join a PSG in the Champions League, um, then it's Marseille uh, in there. Nice, Strasbourg and Lille also in the co-conversation. So this is rather tight, 53, Marseille 52, Rennes 50 for Nice, 48 for 46 for Strasbourg and Lille. I don't think Monaco will go in there. And there was also, the, the Monaco is also a team that will get blown up, but at least they beat PSG uh, rather convincingly. Going over to uh, the Netherlands, it was all about the classic uh, between Ajax and Feyenoord. And as I said, uh, Feyenoord in the first half really, cut right into all of Ajax's weaknesses. Uh, amazing atmosphere. Yes, there was a burning banner. So it, it, it was teetering on being a complete disaster. Um, I really like the green Feyenoord jersey. And I, now I know that I, I look at Feyenoord's uh, um, Rotterdam's uh, colors, of course, um, white and green. So uh, having those green jerseys makes a whole lot of sense for Feyenoord. Um, Sinistera giving Feyenoord the early lead. I think uh, it, they had it all in there to make more, but Alea gets an equalizer, but the right up there again, uh, a very quick car, 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 car track, hitting Ajax right where, where it's hurt, and Ajax still reeling from that loss to, to, to Benfica. 2 1 at the half. And I think it could have been three. Easily three. Feyenoord absolutely took the game to Ajax. How in the second uh, half? Maybe they were hanging a little bit too, too, too much back. Maybe they took too much time. Uh, uh, you know, maybe they thought they, they want to see all of the game. Ajax came back, they hit early on the world work. And then in the 70th minute, it was a free kick from far out where Tadic, you think there's a cross coming in? No, he goes straight for the corner. Brilliant free kick, 2-2. Two, two. But they knew that the 2-2 two, two is probably not, not enough because PSV were about to win the game. Then it, they would be level on points, which would add to the confusion. And so it is Anthony who then scores the win in the 3-2, making a famous scene, taking a short, standing in front of the Ajax fans. I mean, uh, already an iconic picture, I would say, in that rivalry. However, the one thing with Anthony, he's a brilliant player, but what, uh, in a way, a rotten character. I mean, he... <laughs> the way he, uh, he is diving there, then he wants, wants, wants to get up, back, back in the pitch, then Tadej is throwing, throwing him out, dive again, he gets the yell, yell. It was a ridiculous scene in many, many ways, but it's a pretty big win for Ajax, one has to say. PSV keep up there, uh, part of a bargain with the 5-0 destruction of Sittard. Um, and so they keep up the title race. It's still 80-20 more or less for Ajax going going into it. Feyenoord definitely out of it. They're now 11 points behind Ajax. 20 coming in there as well. AZ dropping points. So 20 is now entering conversation when I always thought Vitesse is the other team. So it's always a little... Uh, what's behind there is always interesting in the Netherlands. So that was it for me from those two leagues. Uh, please let me know what you thought about the happening stack. Give me a thumbs up. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and click that little bell. So in order to stay updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. With that, have a good day.